If they do the crime, they go to damn well pay. But somebody promising the human rights, while somebody threatening to put out their lights. The more tree come with little children that boys. A bullet start to wind and put an end to the joy. Now the line calls for the mama to mourn. The night keeps on, the gold keeps on. You see, they, they want the pocket full with blue, blue silk. They want the stuff you drink it full cream milk. The little red silk is not their true friend. The blue one have to extra north on the end. So I tag on the forest, now they take it to hell. But look where we meet. Well, 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 I hear a madman born. As he spread out on the wall. He said, this is it, this is it, this is it, I've been hit. No time to give up, brother, no time to quit. When the child of a madman. When they stay from a strange land. That is the plantation that is Trinidad and Tobago, where the masses have assembled themselves into three positions, I black, I Indian, I above it all. That's Trinidad and Tobago, so I above it all. It's meeting St. Finbar's Church, and it's pulled together West Morris and Goodwood Gardens, the names like Pantin and Thompson. So them does get together because they above it all. And then the blacks is meet where the blacks meet, and the Indians meet where the Indians meet. And the people who own and operate the two political parties that don't give a shit who black, who Indian, or who think they're above it all, they take the billions and go. 
Because when we talk, when we talk, y'all talk. Y'all pent out names, Ish, Steve, Calder, Johnny O, bam, 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 bam. All you know, all you know, and all you still don't care. Today I listen to the government. You know, you know how we come into this? Sometimes you have to come at a situation where you just jump in and eat your way out. So we gonna start there. That's any start. The start is Marlboro House because whatever the PNM did in 1956 and Bade Sagan and and Kapil Deo and all of these names, Taj Mahal Hossein and Ellis Clark and all of them, they gone. They gone. Worms and cockroaches eating them. But we still, to this day. We still, to this day, paying for their sins. The rain washed away the numbers on their tombstone. But we still live in the consequences of that madness. Let's talk about money. Tonight, I would like to have the attention of those who consider themselves black, African, Negro, grandchildren of Africa, dark skin, whatever. Because none of the people who have a problem with any of those words could tell you what is the political correct word. You want all the afro trainees and the indo trainees and the browns and the straight hairs, whoever you call it all yourself, let me get together. And you see all your who above it all, get involved now because gun went in Gillette house. But we got stick up in there because the wolf, he feeding. Let's talk about money. Today, the Prime Minister came to the masses, the masses of Trinidad and Tobago, that includes the blacks, the Indians, and those who are above it all, and came to you to plead his case. And why would he need to plead his case when they have nothing but contempt for you and your needs and your desires? Because they've not yet found a way to remove the power of your vote. You see... On the plantation that is Trinidad and Tobago, once every couple of years, the slaves get to say who live in Massa House. That's all we determine. We don't ask all of the people who campaigning to be Massa, we don't ask them, how hard you go between? You're taking rain here with your children? Will we get rations and food? How hard you go walk we? We don't ask them questions. We just have any, mini, miny, mo. And pick one. And whoever's massa will live the next five years. Which is stupid. It is not the intention of how democracy is supposed to work. And hopefully. Because I keep saying this orange revolution. This progressive empowerment party, the size of this party and this movement, and the road that start off as a dirt track that give way to a lane that become a one a one road that become a street and it become an avenue. Now I watch it down a highway with plenty of people with me, and I can't take credit for it. There are a lot of people outside there who take credit for everything that's going on in their life and they, they never to blame. They never to blame. They're not responsible, but they're the beneficiary and they, they're entitled to claim all the success. You never hear the saying, success has many fathers, failures, and often. We, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have the power to fire Keith Rowley today. Right now. Tonight. 1.4 million people going the road tonight. The police, the army, the media, BBC, Al Jazeera. We will, rain will fall, sun will shine. They will debate it in the courthouse. But at the end of the day, the country belongs to 1.4 million people. But listening to the Prime Minister in his last two press conferences, you wouldn't think that. And today, they beat you into a frenzy and tell you, they're talking state of emergency. 
Not panic, y'all. So 70,000 of y'all sit down and watch it live on Facebook. Before you realize, this man talking a crocus bag of ass, and he didn't even have the decency to bring the crocus bag. So he just talking ass and turn it off. When they say great, from the interminable droning monologue of Keith Rowley and transition to the unbearable Terence Dale saying, without saying anything of substance, I turn off the TV. I couldn't take any more. I said, no matter what he says, it'll end up in my news feed. There's 10 things. They said 10 things. Between all of them and three hours they took, they basically said 10 things. It could have been an email. It could have been a post on Facebook. This could have been a press release. This didn't have to be a press conference that wasted so many of our afternoons. But we, we social isolating, so we have some time. And they feel, but well, if you have the time, I will squander it. Or so the story went. But listening to their 10 things, and I had to respond, as is my want, W-O-N-T, Google that. I had to have a response because somebody needs to, needs to. And here, man, I'm not saying I'm the brightest bulb or the sharpest tool or the biggest brain. But I'm saying, of the people who are bright and sharp and have a brain, I am the only one willing to give it to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, no strings attached. This could go away. I don't have to be in no office. I wish, somehow, I could get us to where I would like us to be without me having to actually be in public office. Because I don't even want to benefit from this. I want to work at it, solve the problem, and get it done. The best people in history, that's the road they chose. Let's address that press conference today. We're talking about money, but I told you earlier, jump in, eat your way out. Jump in here. Like many, I found myself glued to the television today for the government's press conference on COVID-19 coronavirus, expecting elucidation and direction, but got neither. I'm going to stick a pen. Today, my brother, as the senior author, together with colleagues and other doctors, published a paper that will go on to instruct the planet, all of the doctors around the world, and all of the first responders, he is a Trinbagonian, and he is shining in Canada, in Trinidad, he'd still be catching all of his asses. Because that's Trinidad, a nation that kills its young and eats them, has no respect for you. It is no respecter of ability and capability and how bright you are. I, I am an aberration. By now, I was supposed to get a message, hush your ass and stay quiet. I was supposed to get that message. Barbara Mute, Barbara Mute, Arthur Lockjack Galpal from Universal Serials, Associated Brands. Barbara Mute, no less, jump out herself today to come and tell me that I shouldn't say what I said when I said this. With a picture of Keith Rowley, I said, this Prime Minister didn't create this virus. But he ignored it, he denied it, he minimized it, and politicized it. As leader, the buck stops with him. By failing to take the steps required earlier, including the debate as a matter of public importance in the nation's parliament, the shutting of the country's airports and borders, as well as the cancellation of Carnival, he put the whole nation at risk. He is now culpable for the chaos and the unnecessary illness and any preventable loss of life because of it. And his supporters are too. That is the human cost of delusional cult politics. And we are all paying equally for it now. The blacks, the browns, and those above it all.
all of us, together. Barbara jumped out herself. She nearly left her finery behind. She jumped out herself to attack me for having the audacity for calling a spade a spade. Because Barbara Mute is a beneficiary of the PNM. It is Barbara Mute who was holding Keith Rowley's hand on nomination day in 2015 when I and my little team went to the returning office in Carnage to sign myself up. I ran as an independent against Keith Rowley. Did I get votes? No. Did Keith, did Keith Rowley benefit from being part of the cult? Yes. Would Barbara be holding his hand if he was running as an independent, forming his own party? No. Because Barbara and Arthur and all of their friends in the secret societies that operate Trinidad and Tobago, they make sure that they benefit from their acquaintance and their friendship. So Barbara, when I saw her today, and Bert Gransall, Bert Gransall, here are the kind of people who jump out their underwear to come to attack me. And I'm thinking, if these coming out, we reach the deep end of the pool, we reach, we reach where all the Zandoli is, we reach them, we press in the nerve. The Progressive Empowerment Party cannot be considered the UNC because the UNC out there busting me up too. The Progressive Empowerment Party has given black Trinbagonians a voice and we touching the very nerve that holds the Balize cult together because gunman in she hold they like that when you see them dancing, 9 o'clock in the morning, in the Palisade house, you know, Faris and Stuart dancing, they know it's my voice they dance to. We reach, we reach down by the Zessas. When I went so come on, they come out, they tell me, boy, unleash the Zess. And I remember, Rudyard Kipling, and this is something, Graham Gonzalez, who is a very dear friend of mine, and he is my senior, but he was somebody that I turned to for guidance. And one of the things he steered me to was If by Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling is the person who wrote Jungle Book. But this is an instruction for men. Actually, Kipling wrote this as a letter to his son. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you could trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you could wait, but not be tired of waiting. Or be lied about, don't deal in lies. Or be hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you could think and not make thoughts your aim. If you could meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. If you could hear, if you could bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them back with worn out tools. If you could make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at the beginning, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you could force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after you're gone, and so hold on when there is nothing left in you except the will which says, hold on. If you could talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings and not lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends could hurt you, if all men come to you but none too much, if you could fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and all that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Rudyard Kipling, if, and I read that to you because I, while reading it, I am analyzing me. Have I lived up? Have I lived up to that? Because that's a guideline 
for me? Have I lived up to that? Can I say that I could talk with crowds and keep my virtue and walk with kings and not lose the common touch? I want to say yes. I want to say that I have the ability to converse and meet and socialize and line any level of society. And somebody said today, somebody made a comment on a post, congratulations, chief. And somebody came and said, you see this thing, chief and boss and thing? That is what is get everybody in trouble. And I said, I said, listen, people call me anything but late for dinner. I will always be me. I don't know how to be anything else. There is nobody whose friendship I am pining after that I need to elevate myself to wherever they think they are so that I could socialize with them. I am more than happy and content exactly how I am, who I am, where I am, with what I have. I got to go. So I want to say that. Don't look for them thing with me. The reason I talk the way I talk is called not putting on airs. This is how I will talk to my mother and my father and my son and my daughter. is how I talk. It's me. And if you know me, I have one way. And nobody could say they know a different me. There are people outside there who would like to make a different legend and version of who I am. And they say the nastiest things about me. But then I remember while I'm reading this, if you could wait and not be tired by waiting or be lied about, don't deal in lies. Someone said, and I'm trying to remember his name. I'll give, I'll give you the exact quote. If you would slay Dragons. Is this dragons? See to it. Monsters. He who would slay monsters. Hey, I'm 53 now, eh? and they have plenty in this head. He who would slay monsters should see to it along the way. He doesn't become a monster. I think it was Voltaire that said that. If somebody remembers or could say that who it was somebody different, then I apologize. Voltaire is a, he was a bright guy. He said common sense is not so common. He who would slay monsters should see to it that he does not become a monster. These are, these are the stones that I touch. I have had people come into my life Friend from friend land, boy. The best. Love you like love and then betray you. And you, me, in this instance, have to just walk the walk and walk on. You will never be all things to all people. Nobody. You will never, ever be all things to all people. Christ, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and I am no way comparing myself to the, those gentlemen. But those gentlemen, at the level they were at, had haters. Who the hell is me? Who? Like many, I found myself glued to the television today for the government's press conference on COVID-19 coronavirus, expecting elucidation and direction, but got neither. What we were treated to instead was a meandering treatise of ad hoc issues that offered little to assist those on the front line, expected to absorb the brunt of this crisis and survive. And while this is not the complete response, certain things need to be answered to give the public another view of what was said. Now the question is, before I go on, why is that my responsibility? I ask Satish Ramsaran, why are we doing this? And Satish said, somebody has to, and nobody else is. And that simple sentence, he was correct. He was absolutely correct. And was, he assured me, that whatever I had to do, I had to make sure and do it properly. Because we've taken up the mantle 
We've taken it up. And we have to follow through because somebody has to. So it falls to us. It falls to us in the Progressive Empowerment Party to do it because somebody has to. All governments are self-serving and chest-beating and this government is no different. But one would have expected some meat on the bone as substance from a government that kept repeating that it was paying attention to the world grappling with the same crisis but clearly took nothing away from the rest, from what the rest are doing about it. And I want to add something to this conversation that a young lady posted on a thread and I had to screenshot it and share it because the, the, the supporters of these parties, they don't stop to think that you're defending things that you shouldn't be defending. And she said her name was Karim Amanda Rahman. She said the first COVID-19 death was, the, was 9th of the first 20. On the 23rd of January 2020, the city of Wuhan was quarantined. By the beginning of February, there were over 500 deaths in Wuhan. Exactly one month after Wuhan, a city of 25 million people was quarantined. The government of China and Tobago still allowed. This was January. We had carnival in what, what month? March. The government of China and Tobago still allowed carnival to take place on our small island with only 1.4 million people, allowing thousands of foreigners to come to our country risking us all and to this day although we now have many cases it may be our citizens are still fighting the fact that carnival has nothing to do with it and shouldn't have been cancelled and still fighting and arguing shaking my head ever heard prevention is better than cure god help us now i just point this out there consider it a rock in the road drive wrong it if it have if it served no purpose why is it that a prerequisite to be tested now is that you must have traveled. Why is that a prerequisite? Is it that we're trying to distance ourselves from the carnival connection so that people who may be infected with coronavirus, because you see, my brother, he's a brain where this is concerned. He told us last night, 10,000 people could have it in Trinidad, positive. And I'm thinking back in January, I had this dry cough and it wouldn't go away. I was sucking these Ricola sweets and taking cough syrup. My doctor couldn't tell me and I'm going to go St. Augustine to find out because after you have any sickness, your antibodies change and it leaves, uh, it leaves remnants. The antibodies that fight that continue on in your genetic marker and that is your immunity. They are now part of your arsenal. You've created that. Your body has created a response and that response is now part of who you are. I want to find out if I had it then. You see, it's not that it's not that Trinidad only have seven cases. Trinidad can have 7,000 cases. But if you are not in any way immunocompromised, you're not at risk. It is highly contagious. But if you're not immunocompromised, if you're not immuno, if your immunity is not, your immune system is not suppressed, if you are not an elderly person whose organs are starting to break down, if you are not compromised physically in any way, that, that cold, that virus, will pass through you like any other virus and you may not even know because if you are not one of the immunocompromised people like the footballer 21 years old who didn't know he had leukemia and died you could have it and it mean nothing to you the problem is and this is why we wanted to stop carnival 
And this is why we're asking everybody to self-isolate. And it is us again. We were the ones who put out into the public space and we were pursuing that. Rowley and them on we bandwagon. He tell people they have a man on Facebook trying to run the country. Rowley, if I am if I am not doing a better job than you, sir, stop copying my policies, our policies. And I'm willing to debate you, friend, son, partner, wherever you wanna call yourself, horse, spa, anything you think you want to be, rootsy guy. Let me meet public. Put on them cameras, broadcast it live, anytime, any place. And I tell Faris to tell you, I'll come in Balize House to debate you. I ain't afraid you. And if you think you could handle that confrontation, set it up. Let the people ask the questions. The only rules I want for that debate, two rules. Come look at come along, but we don't really need her at this point. They, they, I only want two rules. Whatever question the people ask, I will answer and you will answer. Whatever they ask. As they ask it. The second rule is the microphone live for a minute and 30 seconds to answer that question. Answer in a minute and 30 seconds. And then the mic go dead. So you can ramble on after. If you're bothering yourself. You ain't bothering nobody else. And I could... No, we need women, Melissa. This is, not a, this is not a gender thing. It's just Kamala and her crew have decided to take a very long nap. So every now and then, they'll do something. Every now and then, they'll kick into gear. Hey, all you hear coronavirus going on? Let me, let me provoke the speaker of the house. Because we know... If we say, Madam Speaker, let me, dis let me, di let me discuss people who use left turn indicators to turn right. That is not a matter of urgent business. So no matter what they ask her, she say no, and she walk. She say no. So they, they stand up a couple times and mention, let me discuss coronavirus. She say no. Not, not important to we. And now, that is all they can talk about. We ask. Now, I'll tell you something. If the Progressive Empowerment Party was the opposition, the Parliament would be in the street. If the Progressive Empowerment Party was the opposition, and we raised an issue of urgent national interest, and the Speaker of the House appointed by the government refused that many of the people's representatives' requests, we will go in the street and we will call all of the people of all of the constituencies come to the parliament. Something wrong here. Yeah. Your parliament not working right. We need a doctor. We need a jarry. We need a remedy. We need two chicken foot on every corner. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need some holy water. Call everybody. Bring them down. Bring a rhythm section a tass and a pan. Because we parliament spoil. Because if the people's representatives cannot stand up and get the speaker to deal with an issue of urgent national importance, then the opposition irrelevant, take it outside. But you don't, you're not set up for that. You're set up to stunt. You're set up to stand up. And you get and you sit back down. Waiting to see what they have in the tea room. What can I juice today? Tim, you ask them, it's pineapple. I'm feeling for a pineapple juice, but it's so. That's what's going on in the parliament. Nothing. Nothing do work. So when they're outside, they're beating the chest and they send Paul L. Brian Stone. Poor fella, he's the last of the Mohicans, you know. They have nobody else. It's only Brian Stone outside there accusing the PNM of not debating a matter of urgent national importance. Brother, the Speaker of the House is a PNM member. The Speaker of the House is a PNM appointee. But please, 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 and you know why I'm saying that? Please, 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 is to remind you all, please, 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 who do I remind you all of? Wade Bark. Wade Bark was the Speaker of the House when the UNC People's Partnership was in office. The system is stupid. That you control the speaker. It's like Manchester's about to play Chelsea. And Manchester, one of their players, become the referee. How many whistles they go blow? 
against Manu, your side. How many? None. The speaker walk is a stupid position and it needed to fix. It needed to fix. Kurt Allen said in Political Symphony, the speaker not working. We need to fix the speaker. He was, of course, using it in an analogy. But nobody talking to you about that. Nobody in the politics talking to you about that. So, so it broken. When you're in opposition, you're getting to government, you don't fix it. What's going on? How could the UNC tell people with a good, clear conscience that they asked to debate something three times and they are representing a large cross-section of this society? When they sat back down, they, the UNC, not the speaker, Speaker doing she work. When the UNC sat back down, they silenced all of their supporters. Madam Speaker, I am taking my entire side. We are vacating this house. This is contempt for the process. You have refused to listen to half of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and we will take this debate to them outside. If this is a PNM house and you as a PNM speaker, all your play small goal in here, use we side too. We going outside there. The people will talk to we in the street. Because that's, that's what the people are looking for. Real representation. They want their voices heard. Try to explain to Errol Fabian. The system not going to work. No matter your good intention. Until you put people there with the knowledge and the courage to fix it. It need to break. Trinidad is broken. Eric Williams and the band of bandits that set Trinidad up, the Lodge Boys, the Illuminati fellas, the Unseen Hand, those that take a piece of every sale that make the Casa in this Trinidad and Tobago Casino, Massa in this plantation, Trinidad broken. You don't see them. Them do have a beat up. No. Today, we will give them 2.7 billion. Why are we kickstarting an economy that we are about to mothball? Nobody see that. Nobody asks that. Nobody in the media. No economists. No nothing. There's nobody in this country that heard the Prime Minister say today that we are mothballing the economy. But we will give business $2.7 billion. Which business? It's not the doubles man benefiting from the repo rate and liquidity. It's not the small vendor and the small businessman who benefited. There's your partners and them. You give them the profit that they're going to lose. So they will, all right, we cool. You give me profit, we okay. Because them going and mothball the company. And you, the workers, who are not benefiting from that $2.75 billion, you going home and you get your hundred and fifty dollars. Eat some. Eat, well, you can your breadfruit. This is how they treating you, and this is how you are allowing yourself to be treated. The name of this video is "Let's Talk About Money," and after get to let's talk about money, or we will have to have a part two. But there's a reason that your money is so worthless. The reason there's a reason you work so hard and get money in your hand, and it can't buy nothing. There's a reason. Food. More money for food importers, but nothing for the farmers that could make us food independent and insulate us from the vagaries of such developments in the future is the best indicator of a government without a vision for the country or its people. Now, I'm lucky like Kamala. Kamala gonna write, or Dave Tanko, and crew going and write something and put Kamala name on it and release it and Newsday and Garden Express will broadcast it because they need to create the illusion that they only have two political parties in this country and that is bullshit because the biggest, strongest, baddest man in the yard is the Progressive Empowerment Party. We will fix this shit. 
Trust me when I tell you, we will fix this shit. Drug men who benefit from our open borders will flee. Money launderers who benefit from our lax financial regulations and our porous borders will flee. The corrupt contract mafia who use our public works as a laundromat for cocaine and corruption dollars will flee. The progressive empowerment party will fix this shit. And you need to vote for a party regardless of who you are, what color drawers you wear. And I have to say it so because some of you get your knickers in a twi twist. He said shit. Nah, sorry. I'll keep. Continue on. Do we wear one? Because this man said he would shit. But Keith said he have, he's wear shit kickers on his foot. How come you all didn't react to that? How come you didn't react to that? Do you really believe? A progressive empowerment party government led by Philip Edward Alexander in the parliament, if it were the opposition, could be told in the parliament, police would have drag we out. That is the people house. Madam Speaker, this is the constitution of the republic. We here representing people. Loan deferral. I'm giving you what they say. Loan referral. I'm reading their words. Banks have agreed to defer loan installments due in the, uh, in the coming months to help citizens cope with this unexpected crisis. Banks to help citizens cope with this unexpected crisis. Our position, this, the banks have no choice but to defer if they want to survive because of the parasitic symbiotic relationship that ties their fortune directly to their customers. Put another way, if the China man and the body man, and the taxi man, and the barber man, and the computer man, and the cell phone man, and the job job lady go out of business. Republic Bank going out of business too. Because you might sit down here and think, no, Republic does work with Christian Mute and Vemco, and Republic does work with Sabga and Macal. They may need job job and Baji. But without Job Job and Baji to shop by KFC, Christian Mute and Vemco collapse. Without Job Job and Baji to buy Guardian and other shit that Sabga selling in Bescrete and Abel and all that. Without Job Job money and Chana money and Baji money, Sabga back on the road selling cloth. Mamo! Mamo! Take it to the bank. It's a pyramid. The economy is a pyramid. Those at the top farting through silk are wholly dependent on those farting through holy cotton. Trust me when I tell you that. It is why I was able to tell Peter George Sr. You're talking shit about you being the most powerful. You're not. You're fortunate. You're fortunate. But if the people of this country withhold their labor and their consumption, you're done. The tech come in and cut your lights. It is a pyramid. It is the people on the bottom that upholds the entire economy. So the banks ain't doing nobody a favor. If people had no money, banks had to hold the hand. Because you levy on everybody and then you collapse on your banking receivership. Who win? That's like the image of the book constrictor that eat the alligator halfway and then the alligator bust open the book and shake the belly and both of them dead symbiotic relationship don't make it sound hard or magnanimous the state can use taxation or law to compel but the banks should do it out of their own selfish desire to preserve that multi-billion dollar annual gravy train they all enjoy it's not like it's real money to them 
the loans that they are asked to defer is other people's money, that they charge a fee for the pleasure of holding for them and lend to others at interest, foregoing a month or two of free money won't break them. SCA. A delay in the setting of C, SEA, CXC, and CAPE are now expected. Further details to be confirmed. We are way beyond the point of believing that the SEA is an indicator of who is the best and brightest in an examination rigged by an unfair 20% being chosen by the prestige schools and the rest being sifted through to the bottom. It serves no one. Replacing that child abusing exam would be the most grown up thing we could do as a nation. And the Progressive Empowerment Party promises that all schools will be transitioned to tenure school system that gives all children a chance to be the best that they could be, while providing for those predisposed to pursuits other than scholastic. Trades, arts, sports, and other disciplines have long demonstrated a capacity to provide a good life for those so inclined. And we should be well beyond forcing our children to pursuits that do not make them happy. When you hear rich lawyers and fancy doctor and this engineer and that architect blow their own brains out or jump off a building or drug addicted and alcohol intoxicated till they die, it's because when they were young children, mommy and daddy tell them you have to be a doctor or a lawyer. When the child want to be a fireman and the country need firemen. Because mommy and daddy, if they're in the house and the house on fire, will appreciate a fireman very much. It's the joke where the fellow was choking to death and in the restaurant and he was almost dead. And a guy who just come through the door, grab him. He said, he's a paramedic. Grab him, hit him a Heimlich maneuver and clear his throat. The man get back his color, come back to life. When he catch his breath, he tell the fellow, I'm a very wealthy man. You could have anything you want. Fella tell him, give me half of what you were prepared to give away when you thought you was dead. Social service and support. I want to find all their words. Eh? So social support systems to be expanded to help the most vulnerable cope with the economic burden. While this is laudable, I'm using words that I hope you're writing it down and going on Google. Eh? Every time one of these governments have created a social safety net, it has come with political strings attached and at extreme cost to taxpayers left to pay for the corruption that comes with it all every day. All this may turn out to be is more of the same food card URP in exchange for votes and support misbehavior in public office nonsense that has colored the intentions of every government we have ever had. Businesses to preserve jobs. This one I liked. This one I liked. Businesses have been asked to do what they can to preserve jobs. Which businesses and how? Why hasn't the state made meaningful concessions to the middle class and small business community by agreeing to pay their rents, mortgages, and utility costs for the duration of the crisis? Together with the banks deferring loan payments, the business community could then simply unplug and reconnect after the crisis is over. Government could also pay a stipend to all workers whose, business, whose businesses cannot hold an employee during the time of zero income. But again, as it is not expected to last more than a few months, this would not break the bank and would rather work to preserve the tax collection net the government needs for more than 40% of its annual income. Do you know, Baji Chana Job Job is 40% of the tax collections that run, of the budget that run this country. Masks and PPE, this one, this one. Masks and PPE, I'm not seeing this one, and I apologize. Masks and PPE have been ordered. Why is this being done so late for a crisis we knew was coming? This, more than anything, is an indication of the government's failure to prepare and manage a crisis it knew was headed our way. An unpardonable sin. Liquidity injection through the lowering of the repo rate. 
and that is reduction in the repo rate and the deposit requirement for banks will immediately place 2.7 billion of needed liquidity into the system. If the government managed the fallout at the human level, it would not need this measure at this point and could have timed it better to restart the economy after the crisis is behind us. Now that this hand is played, it will have to be played again at a future date for a government that fails to understand or manage the economy for all the people. Draw your reference. When all the boys and girls together agreed to lend Clico money, because that's what they did. They took $20 billion. In fact, give Clico money. Because the, we call it a bailout. But the $20 billion, or the $25 billion, I forget which, that they gave to Clico to cover all of the madness and mayhem that was Clico and CL Financial, that $25 billion, it took us over 12 years to break even. I don't know if we are broken even yet on Clico. But when we get back our money, they gain back Clico. But that same $20 billion, if it was in an interest bearing account somewhere in the world that works, in the 12 years that passed, it would have made us another 20 billion. It would be worth 40 billion. As it is, we now have or supposed to get back our initial 20 billion with no interest and they get back their Clico. And I said at the time that it would be in the government's best interest and the country's best interest to bail out the people. Bail out the people. Sell Clico. Break it up and sell the parts. Sell home construction to somebody. Sell one Woodbrook place to somebody. Sell Republic Bank. Sell it all. Punish Dupre and the rest of those bandits that used shiny suits to fool people and rob them. Because that's what happened. And left a gaping hole in the economy that we had to plug. And we plugged it badly. But I'm just saying, injecting liquidity now, when we're mothballing the economy for two weeks or a month, seems to not make sense unless you're trying to maintain somebody's profits. And that is not Jub Jub, Bodhi and Baji. First responder rotation. Again. First responder rotation. Rotation system being considered for first responders and frontline medical staff. That we are pretending that this is a good idea and not an actual lesson learned from SARS and H1N1 is funny. This is now international standard and protocol and had the National Operations Center been part of the preparation for the inevitable arrival of COVID-19. Responder and healthcare emergency protocols would have already been in place from the first case. And I want to say to you again, we have a copy of the front page of Kobe Bryant when his helicopter crashed and they were trying desperately to find a vaccine for, COVID, for coronavirus. They didn't have COVID-19 as the name yet. It was still early times. We knew this was coming. We had months to play. So even if you had to have your carnival, operationalize the National Operations Center, get the ODPM ready behind the scenes, put the RHAs in connection with each other, with emergency responders, get your systems in place. If we get 10, they go in Cora. If we get our next 10, they go in Cuba. Our next 10 after that, we send them by Roger Boyne's place in Toko. That's not why they send the cruise ship people. Funds for Tobago hotels. Well, this one, I still don't understand. Additional funds to be allocated to Tobago hotels to allow for upgrades, which in turn will create employment and consumption. While Tobago might be happy for any gifts they get at this or any time, what we should have been doing is working towards long-term development goals for this style. I am not sure why this handout was coupled with the coronavirus response other than cheap politicking and a Hail Mary hope of pulling Tobago back from Watson Duke. 
If this is the best the government's COVID-19 response committee could come up with, then we are in a lot worse trouble than I thought. And the quicker we fire this band of self-servers, the faster we can rescue this country from the twin crises of COVID-19, coronavirus, and disadministration. The nation needed real policies that isolate and provide for the elderly and those most at risk. The emergency importation of ventilators to add to the existing stock in case of a spike in cases among the at-risk and elderly community as the lack of ventilators is the leading cause of preventable death from COVID-19. This entire press conference came across like a political stunt and the government should be ashamed for attempting to capitalize on tragedy for political gain. This was a proper waste of an afternoon. We can and must do better than this as a nation. We must look at what took place in Trinidad and Tobago for the past four and a half years. They beat we, they rub we, they kick we up, they mash up we thing. They, by the time you're catching yourself here, they're beating you over there. They keep you off balance. You can't even remember how much things they do wrong. If you had to start making a list right now, hey boy, you remember that? Yeah, right now. That's what we're doing. They do so much wrong. So much wrong. In four and a half years. And then they call a press conference and play Chuck Sheen she I. When she have a press conference, Chuck Sheen she I. And nobody explained it to Trin Begonians why they work as hard as they work and their money has no value. They can't afford food. They can't afford to live. We treat it like workers on a plantation. We, they treat us like they're raising mushrooms, kept in the dark and fed bullshit. And we have to stop that. We. Because right now, they control our labor. And right now, they control our consumption. But we have the vote. And it is the vote that will change how this country runs. We have the vote. We have the ability to vote ourselves a better country. We have the ability to do that. We do. And it's not about black or Indian or who think they're above it all. It's about wanting a better country or go. But the people who stay in here, that are into the conversation, frustrating any attempts at a rescue, is why when they train you as a lifeguard, if you go out to rescue somebody and they splash it around, knock them out cold. Trinidad and Tobago is like we're drowning, but we're not letting nobody save us. Running out of analogies. Let's talk about money. Why does Sri Lanka Bego have its own currency? You ever wonder? Who benefits? Who benefits from the Sri Lanka Tobago dollar? Not you. Sovereignty? What does that mean? What does sovereignty mean? When you are working as hard as you work and you are paid one thirteenth of what somebody per hour in America is paid less and then when you go to shop you pay 10 times sometimes 15 times what your colleague in America is paid so you get hit twice you get devalued money and then everything overpriced because they tell you we import everything we pay in U.S. We don't buy U.S. I hear them talk about when we buy U.S. We don't, Trinidad as a nation don't buy U.S. Nobody outside there saying, you want to buy some of our U.S. with your Trinidad and Tobago toilet paper money? Nobody wants it. Nobody wants our money. We get U.S. for oil. We get U.S. from BP Amoco, British Gas, and any of the other things we sell, methanol. We get U.S. dollars for that. That's our U.S. It comes into the country. And then we do this piece of madness. We turn that U.S. into Trinidad and Tobago dollars. And then we say we float in against the U.S. But why would, we be need, why would we need to be floating against the U.S. when our entire economy is based on U.S. income and expenditure? Why the need for us to sell U.S. to the banks that we get for $6? But if you're buying, you're buying it at $6.77. 
Why that 13% tax? And do you realize what that does to the finished cost of something? When you look at something that you buy, this phone, if I buy this phone in Trinidad, I will pay the manufacturer's price at the import stage, whatever that was. In America, that manufacturer's price plus markup for retail is the price everybody pay. But in Trinidad, we don't make these phones here. So I have to pay the manufacturer's price. And then I have to pay the importation price, the shipping, they get it here, the importer's price, who is usually not the retailer. If it is, well, it is just the retail markup on top of that. But when he bought this, because he had to buy it with US dollars, but he's coming back to sell it for TT dollars, he is buying this at a 13% higher price just because of the foreign exchange. Just because he's selling to you in TT and he has to buy it back in US, he's giving you at a rate that has to be com competitive with the world because you could buy it on Amazon. So he has to try and match the price that you could buy it from on Amazon. But when it's time for him to go and buy another one, the foreign exchange, the banks, he's paying 677 or more. And he can't change that fact. He can't make his own US. So he marks up on top of that 13% tax. So he's paying shipping, duty, VAT, banks 13% tax on foreign exchange, shipping, duty, VAT, banks 13%. Four charges. On this phone, four different taxes, four different hands bite off a piece of your money. It's your money. Because now, okay, it's $20 for the phone. Shipping is five, it's 25. The duty is 20, it's 45. The VAT is 15, $51. The foreign exchange is 13%, $59. Now I'm going to add retail markup, even if it's 10%. I'm adding $5.90. So it's $65 for a $20 phone. Competing with people who is $20 cost plus. This is what I pay for it. I add my 10%. Selling for $22. In America, I'm selling for $22. In Trinidad, I'm selling it. For 65, same exchange, same money. But here, the money worth less when you buy it. And the online 7% tax, if you buy it online. Well. So my question to Trinidad and Tobago is this. Why haven't we seriously considered operating our economy in US dollars? Everything that we own in Trinidad and Tobago is based on U.S. dollars. Because if it is not imported whole, it is imported in parts and assembled. Even our food that we grow, they buy foreign chemicals and they buy foreign supplies and, they, and, they, and, they, and they, everything that the farmer needs, the farmer not outside there naked with his two hands, everything that the farmer needs, foreign exchange and importation tax. Why we not just paying our people U.S. minimum wage? $7.25 U.S. an hour. Let them shop in Trinidad, U.S. dollars. Then I'm going to grocery, shop with U.S. Why are we not doing that? Why don't we do that? You see, if we do that, we would lose that 13% tax. No, there's another way to do it. You could just vote a government into office that put rules and regulations and limits the spread on the foreign exchange to 2.5%. The Bankers Association hearing this now, knowing that they put a tax 13% on a $60 billion economy, 
That means the bankers association and the, con com the, the banks that make up the bankers association take about $8 billion out of this economy just in foreign exchange sales. $8 billion a year. Because if it takes $60 billion for the year to operate the country, How much of that goes to imports? Why can't we just receive our US, shop in US, pay our workers in US? And US, you could use US to buy pounds, you could use pounds to buy Canadian, you could use Canadian to buy marks, you could use marks to buy anything. Trinidad money only matters in Trinidad. It's like monopoly money. While you're playing monopoly, you big. You can buy boardwalk and you can buy park place. But you can't take the money out of the monopoly and go and buy a dinner mint. It have no value outside of the game of monopoly. So why do we have our own currency? This is the first serious issue that I think needs to be addressed level the entire play field. Give everybody the same chances. Make it so that a man who is working minimum wage, $7.25 US is the lowest minimum wage I have found. If you pay a Trinidadian $7.25 US per hour, if you pay him $42, $45, a day, $45 a day in Trinidad and Tobago, find my calculator, $50, $50 a day. If you pay a man $50 US a day, you are paying him $350 a day. Our minimum wage in Trinidad and Tobago is $2,800 a month if they've raised it. It's $2,550 and the promise that Imbert made, if they raised it, it would be 2800 The average person in Trinidad and Tobago who works for 2800 TT now, if he was being paid in US, why don't I know where my calculator is on this freaking computer? If you were paying him, don't laugh at me, I don't use those things. $350 a day, 20, 20 day work month, but 22 days is the average. But if you say 20 days, that is $7,000 a month. A minimum wage earner just jumped from $25.50 to $7,000 a month. Now, of course, we are going to be pricing globally competitive because we're importing in the U.S. So we go... Thank you, Kami. I know I could Google it too. Google is called this cost um, calculate for you too. I just have, if you see my desktop, you will laugh. You will laugh. How much things they have on my desktop? I have a dashboard. There you go. Right, I have a calculator there. And how to clear it? It looks like a scientific error. Right, there you go. But the point is, why don't we? work to close the gap. So I suggest this. Thanks, Warren. But I found it. It's a Mac I'm on. Um, so it's, it was literally to open the dashboard. Gordon Gonzalez, if he's watching, he will laugh at me. Because he's the person, right enterprises. Gordon is a Mac guru. Anyway. We need to close the gap between what our people are paid and what they could buy with that money. We need to make the money at the bottom of that pyramid more valuable. And we need to make sure that when we manage in consumer affairs division, need to make sure that a car that sells for 20,000 US dollars, when it reach Trinidad, it do become 10 times that and worse. We need everybody to make money. The employees, the employer, 
the retailer, the wholesaler, everybody need to make money. I still trying to understand why we would allow this to be our reality. And I want you all to think about it. Because I want this to be a conversation that we have. And I want guidance. Because we need to formulate a policy. And we need to advocate that policy. And that policy has to make sense for everybody. You can't say, pay the workers US minimum wage. And then the business owner goes out of business. Because the taxation regime in Trinidad and Tobago needs to be addressed as well. Trinidad makes too much of its money taxing the citizens of the country. We pay extremely high taxes and get nothing in return for it. And that is another very serious issue that needs to be addressed. We need to make sure that our people can have a proper cost of living and that the country, you see, with a real government who had as its mission the expansion of the gross domestic product. We live in an insular, inward-looking country. We have a couple groups of companies that finance political parties to keep the doors closed and keep the competitors out. But if Caribbean start making money in Trinidad, Labats will want to come here. And Corona, well, Corona have a bad name now. Cause, Miller, all of these people should be allowed to also come and set up bear factories in Trinidad. If Caribbean Stag is making money, why don't we have 10 microbreweries in Trinidad? That's what Carib is. Carib is a microbrewery. Why we don't have 10? Why do we have to protect Charles Chocolate? Why? Why don't we have Hershey's and Cadbury's operating in Trinidad? Is left pocket a right pocket? If I put in money in Arthur Lockjack pocket for universal cereals, why I can't be putting money in Kellogg pocket for Kellogg's? It's not like Lockjack money staying here too. Everybody money going outside and investing. I'm not a fool. But if we focused on the gross domestic product of this market, let's say we bring beer and chocolate and cereal and Doritos. Who buying sunshine snacks in Trinidad if a pack of Doritos next to a pack of sunshine snacks called girls is the exact same price? Sunshine snacks out of business. Tomorrow, Barbara Muti and Lockjack out of business. Tomorrow, who buying fruitoos from Universal Cereal if Fruit Loops is the exact same price? Nobody. They gone out of business. Nobody want any Charles chocolate. If you could get Cadbury's and Hershey's at the same price. That should be the ad. The ad for, for, for Charles Chocolate because you can't afford Cadbury's and Hershey's. And you know that's true. And you know that that is the truth. And imagine if you set up as policy with these foreign based manufacturers who come to the country and you tell them you have to work a 60-40 production. 60% of your production has to be exported out of Trinidad and Tobago. All of a sudden, U.S. come in. More than half of your sales must be export. That would be the rule. More than half. Export to Antigua, export to St. Lucia, export to Brazil, export to Panama. It doesn't matter to me. Export all wrong way. Export to Venezuela. Export from here. 60%. Trinidad don't only have to be in the oil and gas business. We could have Tabasco sauce being manufactured in Trinidad and Tobago using Trinidad and Tobago farmers' peppers and exporting New Orleans Tabasco bottled in the sunny isle of Trinidad and Tobago. 60% of your production must be exported, bringing in U.S. Imagine that. Imagine Samsung making phones in Trinidad. Open this market. 20 banks. If we brought 20 banks into Trinidad and Tobago to operate as banks, to compete with Scotia, RBC and Republic, in one week, you don't have to do nothing as the government. You don't have to do nothing as Central Bank. In one week, 
all them fees that those banks charging gone in one week you walk in your branch of Scotia and they have a table with juice and coffee and tea tell it, can I mix you a cup of coffee sir because they want you to keep your business there right now we live in a monopolistic society where it's dank and it's closed off so if you went in Scotia Bank because that's where you have your money and the deal is Every time you walk in the bank, the bank manager gets a kick in your face. You had to have your money somewhere. You take in the kick. That's what we take it now. A financial kick to the face. Every time we do a transaction in the bank we bank in with. Because all of the fees are usurious and rapacious. The banking license should be based on Taking, in taking public deposits and paying them interest and lending that money out for a higher interest. The moment that becomes the way the banks operate again, now the banks looking for people in small business to lend them money. Now they have credit. You're talking excess liquidity. I didn't understand what the ask you're talking about. Because the average small person in Trinidad and Tobago who work in the best bone to debt, can't get finance. They can't get finance. You drop the same person in America and come back in two years, your little doubles man have three roti shop in Brooklyn. Because they have people out there, finance companies are saying, look, this could make money, you know. Let me, um, we will invest with you. Let's do this. John Waters saying, legislate the banking fees and savings account away. Abraham Lincoln said, was it Abraham Lincoln? So we could Google this. Every time we write a new law, we give up our freedom. I don't want to legislate it. I want to open the market and compete in Trinidad and Tobago, 60-40. 60% of all the production must be exported, bring foreign exchange to the country. Chase that 400 billion US dollar, chase that as a GDP. Chase it. Expand oil, gas, um, all the downstream from oil and gas, no problem. But let that account for 25% of the economy. Because the vicissitudes of the energy industry, like now, when Russia and China and Saudi Arabia duking it out, Trinidad can't go and talk to them about keeping the prices high. They have no interest in hearing from us. We are speck. We are a flick away. We don't care about Trinidad at all. But we have a lot of things that we could do. We could go, and again, we wait till coronavirus come and mash up the place. So now, it's hard to even try to think about some of these things. That's George. George of the jungle, that's our dog. Anyway, this one going on a long time, so that must be George telling me to bring it to a wrap. We will do part two of this. Let's talk about money. Let's try to see how we can redo this economy. Let them listen. Let them hear. Let them try and copy what we suggested. It's time to get things to work in this Let me go.
without fear of contradiction. Every time one of these political parties stand up on a podium and talk to you, they lie to you. None of the problems that we have in this country, none of them are critical to the point where we can't survive them. We could fix everything. We could fix traffic. We could fix jobs. We could fix home ownership. We could fix value for money. We could fix water, public health, education. We could fix all of the critical issues that affect you and give you the quality of life that you know that you deserve, that you see all over the world. Now when you're traveling, you think, how come? How come? How come it's only when drug money launderers throw down a piece of money in a business, the average person can't compete? How come? How come that have to be done? Secure the borders, end the drug trade, and stuff the containers, end the drug trade. Everything else that flows, the human trafficking, the guns, the violence, the gangs, all that shit comes from the porous borders and the drug trade. Why haven't we secured the nation's borders? Your guess is as good as mine. They use it as a stunt to go and buy boats. A PNM man is getting in the commission when Trinidad buy boats. Share it among the boys. We're buying boats after boats after boats, parking it up down in Chagaramas, playing the ass and calling that governance. Everything in this country needs to fix from the bottom up. We need to rewrite our laws. We need to go through, undo and redo everything. We could fix it. We could have a better country. If what you want is a better Trinidad and Tobago, help us. Until tomorrow, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.